Come along with the Getting Bit crew as we chase trophy fish across the Midwest. Along the way, we'll be sharing tips, tricks, and tactics while getting bit. We are constantly developing and evolving with modern technology to put more monster fish in the boat and keep you on the next bite. We chase multi-species throughout the year, so stay tuned and subscribe now for more Getting Bit Productions. See you on the water, and until next time, keep getting bit. Just witnessed this guy going nuts, flopping up on shore. We're gonna put him back in the water, even though I think he's must be done time. Let's grab him. Come here, buddy. You're getting me all muddy, aren't you? It's putting you back. You are. Oh, jeez. Okay. That's a female. We got to get her back up. Come on. Oh, let's get it. Getting to be the point where I can't reach you anymore. Oh. <laughs> All right, I got you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna get you back in there. That is a 25, 25 pounder, huge, come on, oh, I can't even tail grab you one handed, gosh, it's a monster, drop you back in, here we go. Finish what you gotta do. Wow. Whew. That was a workout. And I'm a mess. <laughs> but the eggs were ready to go any minute. That fish was 25, 30 pounds all day long and full. So she needs to get up to the facility and do what she needs to do. Harvest those eggs so we can keep the reproduction going. <clears throat> she was right at the point, just banging on everything, trying to loosen up the eggs to get them to go. And, uh, Ended up throwing herself up on shore. All right, guys, we are up in uh, Sturgeon Bay, Door County, Wisconsin, and we are at the Strawberry Creek Salmon Spawning Facility. And uh, the salmon come up here to do their deal and uh, spawn this time of the year. It's uh, middle of October right now and uh, Strawberry Creek is super tiny little creek that comes up and these fish come up this natural creek and then come into this uh, facility that they've created to um, let them do their deal and then they utilize these fish, nothing goes to waste. Um, it's a pretty cool deal, I'm gonna show you real quick the place. 
So this is the process here. Pretty neat thing. Shows that the uh, the cycle, the hatchery reared salmon life cycle. Pretty cool if you're interested. And then uh, fisheries management. And then this is the facility here. So this is the natural creek right here. There you can see them moving up. They're moving up. Right here. So the natural creek. And then here it turns into the, uh, oops, let's get in here. And right now, let's see, let's get it where we can see it. I see four of them moving up. And uh, gradually working their way. There's a dud one there. That, But they're just, they're moving up, and uh, that's the catching pond over there. So the water draws it, uh, the uh, pump, we have a pump down in the channel there. In, the, uh, in Sturgeon Bay, where the ship channel comes out, and that draws water about a mile up over through here and then above the pond, so it just adds more flow. Okay. There's already flow coming in through a trip point, but okay. it adds more flow, so it draws salmon in, obviously. Okay. Uh, gives it somewhere to go, otherwise. How long ago did you guys open it up? We'll be initially another week yet, so it starts at the beginning of October, basically October first, roughly. So we'll spawn the first, try to spawn the first Monday in October, and then uh, go for three weeks. Okay. So, three weeks. Yeah. That's so it, huh? That's the whole process. That's pretty much it. Yep. Mondays and Thursdays for three weeks. It doesn't take long to get the eggs uh, anymore, so it's really a matter of trying to spawn throughout the run, okay. and it lasts about three to four weeks. So. Okay. You try to capture the early fish and the late fish. And, uh, gotcha. And this year you said you've seen bigger ones than usual, yeah, huh? Yeah, some good sized fish coming in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd have to talk to Nick as far as proportion wise, but there's been some number of 30 pound, uh, 30 plus wow. pound fish coming in. Okay. Yeah. And then, so once you, did I hear right that you shock them to get them so that you can actually, uh, do the process before they die? Yeah, they don't, right, so they, um, they get dipped here, there's a big tank that has CO2 injected into it, so it basically just knocks them out, uh, through a gas process, and then... It's a, a CO2 stunner. gas process, it's yeah. not a shocking? No, it's not shocking. Oh, okay. Okay. No, we put, don't put them in a bath of water with uh, CO2, and okay. that anesthetizes them, knocks them out, and then it... Uh, and then uh, there's a stunner here. Actually, it's not out right now, and that kind of finishes the process. Uh, so. Okay. And you take the uh, the eggs and, and the milk both. Correct. And and how does that process happen? I mean, and where where does that yeah, go on? Yeah, so that happens right over here. So we harvest uh, the fish up through here. We do all the biology kind of right here. There's a, there's a uh, somebody that sits inside this hut and does uh, with a laptop and okay. collects the length and the weight information, looks for, you can see it right on here on this list, of the lamprey scars, uh, look at, for coated wire tags, which is part of the big mass marking project that's been going on for a number of years. Okay. Um, and then they get pushed down here where they're sorted for males and females, and this is where the hatchery does their work. So they set up here and trimble the eggs and, and fertilize the fish in the milk here. And then there's a process of disinfecting and water hardening the eggs because you can't just take them back to the hatcher like that and I'll make sure they're not bringing diseases back. Okay. So they have, and they have to be water hard. They're extremely sensitive. Once they pull them out of here, they're pretty fragile. So they, again, you can't just throw them in somewhere and take them back to the hatcher. They have to go through a, a series of tanks here to water harden, disinfect, then the hatcher can take them back to, the, to their hatcher, which is in Wild Rose in the central part of Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. And if you guys didn't do what you do, there is no natural reprodu reproduction, right? Not on Wisconsin side, but on Michigan side there is. Okay. Considerable. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. 
So what is the reason that that is? Do you know? Uh, they just have better habitat, better okay. quality streams. Okay. Uh, different, different quality streams more than anything. Different kind of bottoms and yeah, things like that. Yeah, better substrate they run through uh, forests and woodlands and whatnot, whereas ours is a lot of you know, warm water streams. We've got some natural reproduction in some of our streams, but not nearly what fish can use. Okay. Yeah. And I think I heard, too, that nothing goes to waste, right? Uh, the, the fillets go to, what is it, donation? Correct. If uh, there's um, a food pantry in Green Bay that takes some of the fish, if they're under a certain size, because we can't give them big ones, so they'll take a certain number of them, and then the rest of them um, go to, this year, to a, I think it's a mink, um, a mink farm. So, but some years, um, a fertilizer plant will take them. So yeah, they always go somewhere. Okay. And then the eggs also are sold, the excess eggs are sold to a big farm. Okay. Yep. And then I assume the the salmon in the creek up here that are dying before they get up here, that's bear meat, bear food or... Well, yeah, we don't have too many bears around here, but whatever, right, either fit other birds mostly yeah. or other, other animals. But yeah, a lot of them, it's a short run. You can, you can almost see where the... the where it comes in. So it's not like, you know, the ones that do die are just, it's a natural process. So yep. Right. They will, and we'll try to remove some if they're getting really bad. And, we'll and how does... Why is it that some come up two years, some three years, some four years? It seems like it's always different. You see small ones, you see big ones. Yeah. I mean, what do you know right. what it is that causes them to decide that it, no. this is my year to... <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, there are some hereditary um, characteristics that dictate an early run versus a, a later run or si age of maturity, things like that. They have determined that, so it's really just pretty much part, whatever is wired into the fish, and you know, we don't know necessarily what exactly it is. There's, you know, in, the nat in their natural environment, on the West Coast, there's even different runs, you know, there's spring runs and fall runs and different okay. runs of fish. So. But the, uh, the salmon die and the brown trout don't. Correct. Yeah, it's just a life history adaptation. Yeah, salmon. They can't uh, adapt to that, uh, to the stress of it and whatnot. Yeah, well, for whatever reason, you know, and they die and, and again, and they're not. But the males and the females both die. Correct. Yep, they both die. Yep, but salmon, uh, trout, yep. Yeah, so brown trout, brown trout, and they both die. Uh, they're all spawn again. Okay. I think uh, Atlantic salmon are the only ones that are known to spawn both times. Okay. Interesting. So do, uh, do the browns come up here too? Yeah, we'll get a few browns, but we don't um, imprint them to this body of water. So if whatever comes up here is just some strays. And what happens with them? They um, just get released, basically get released back down. Or um, actually, they probably, yeah, I don't even know. Actually, they'll probably just, it's, it's so few. Yeah. The most likely they just go to whatever, whatever goes to the location of the general either the fertilizer. Okay. But yeah, because at that point, their meat's no good either, anyway. Yeah, there's nothing. And they're just going to hang around up here anyway, and fish until it's all closed. Here, so there's, there's, uh, but it is literally, I've, you know, I've been out here two or four times to help out, and we've had two, uh, one coho salmon each day. That's it. Otherwise, nothing else. No really? That is interesting. Yeah, it's very day to day, but it's mostly Chinooks. Okay. Well, it's a neat process. Yeah. Yeah, we do know this is a fish health station, so we'll have fish health people come in here uh, once a year, and they'll, or each season, we'll do a full mate uh, run down on the health of the fish. So, okay. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's a very, very busy place. I mean, very, very busy. <laughs> I'm just shocked, too, that it's all done within a few weeks. <clears throat> yeah, yep, it is. They're pretty keyed in on when they come in. Amazing how, uh, Beat up, they get looking too. So yeah, yeah, they do. They do. All the just dying. Yeah, they stopped. You know, they stopped feeding a while ago. So they just got one thing in mind right now. Yeah. Very nice. Well, thank you. I appreciate the uh, sure. the education because this is this is really cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a new process. And it's something you can see that most people don't get to see right first hand. Right. Well, and if you and if you didn't do it. 
what would be the, what would the fishery be? Right, yep, definitely. This is where Wisconsin, all of the stock, I mean, I think right now we've got about 800,000 fish or so stock, so all the eggs and most years come right from this facility. Wow, look at that one. That one's on the move. <laughs> They're trying to get up there, both of them. Yeah. That is neat.